Have you been stuck in the same number of student enrollment for the past three years or more? If the answer is yes, in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 reasons for why that could be happening at your studio. And if you stick around until the very end of this video, I will share with you a game plan for your studio to help you break through your plateau and hit the next level of student enrollment at your studio. So stick around and stay tuned. By the way, my name is Hervin Alvarez. We own a company called Get More Students where we help then studio owners with increasing enrollment, saving time, and reducing workload, we do that through using automation and marketing. And so if you're a studio owner looking to grow your studio, then subscribe to this YouTube channel because over here I put content out there to help you grow your studio and do exactly that, okay? So subscribe and with that said, let's dive right in. So I am going to be sharing my screen and showing you here. So. I speak to dance studio owners all the time that believe the reason for why they've hit a plateau, it's because of two things. They think that there's a lot of competition that popped up in their area, or it might just be their area that they think that they're not in an area that enough people want to dance or that they want to do something else. In fact, let me share my screen. I mean, let me not share my screen. Let me put the, the camera back on me. So a lot of studio owners have this misconception that the reason why they're stuck in their plateau and their enrollment, it's because, you know, there's a lot of studio owners. There's a lot of studios that have popped up around their studio and they think like, oh, you know, it used to be so easy in the past. We didn't even have to do any marketing. Students would come to us. Now there's a million other studios and the, the market is saturated. Everybody has a studio. And so like that's it. It's impossible to keep growing or, or in my area there, you know, now there's a million activities that other kid that kids want to do. Now there's hockey. Now there's soccer. Now there's gymnastics. Now there's cheerleading, that cheerleading that people want to go to. Now people don't want to dance. They want to do cheer. You know, all of these things that you tell yourself as to why the reason for why you're advertising, uh, I mean, for why you're not growing your dance studio, uh, and why you're stuck in your, in your, why you have a plateau in your enrollment numbers. And so um, here are 10 reasons why this could be happening. So this is not a, a valid one. I never accept this one as the reason for why, you know, I have a studio owner. In fact, uh, if you go on our on our website, getmorestudents.com, and you go to get to our success stories, you could see studios here in all sorts of different areas. This studio, the studio owner specifically in their area where she's in, in Northridge, California, around her studio, there is 50 other dance studios, 50 in a five mile radius. And so there, the market there is saturated. And even then she was able to grow 500 students in five months, even though her market was completely saturated. Now I say this I, I bring that up because I want you to open up your mind to the possibility that it might not necessarily be the competition for the reason why your studio is not generating, why you're not generating more students, why you're not increasing your enrollment numbers. Um, I guarantee you it has very little, unless you're in a tiny town of like 300 people, you know, then maybe it has something to do with your area. But if you're in a normal city, size city, even if you're in a tiny town, again, I'll share with you um, this studio owner right here is in New Hampton, Iowa. Their, their town is 3,000 people. So if you're in a town of 3,000 people, you know, th th you know that's not the, that's not a major city. You know what I mean? That's not like the greatest area to have a dance studio is in the middle of nowhere. You And yet they still are able to generate students even in, in a tiny town. And so in a tiny rural town. So your area has less to do with it than you think. And not only that, but they were not only able to, uh, she in the middle of New Hampton, Iowa, not only was she able to increase the enrollment, she was also able to raise her prices by like $25. And so that's another misconception, but we won't touch that one so much here uh, uh, when it comes to pricing, but your area has less than, less than you think to do with, can you increase your pricing? Can you bring in more students? Um, you know, so 
keep that in mind, okay? So the next thing, um, here are possible reasons why you might be stuck in a plateau at your studio. So you're, it might be because you're only relying on word of mouth as your only source of marketing for your dance studio. If you're relying only on word of mouth, the pr so look, word of mouth is fantastic. I think word of mouth is great. I think it's the best form of marketing. Now, the problem is that you don't have control over your word of mouth. You can, I mean, you can incentivize people. You could have your break and bring a bestie a uh, week. You could do something like that, or you could do like, uh, you know, take give give kids flyers so that they could bring their friends or something, or they could, or you could incentivize parents to refer you to their friends by giving them fifty dollars or something like that. If they, if somebody enrolls at your dance studio, you could do that. But like, it's not gonna motivate. It's not gonna be that much big of a difference if you do that. I mean, you will obviously. It, it makes a huge difference. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like. You, it's not going to help you attract like a, a ton of more students. You, it's going to help you. The thing about word of mouth is that it works slowly. It's consistent. Um, you know, so every month you might get 5% of your students referring you somebody new. So if you have a hundred students, you might get five new people from word of mouth. If you have a thousand students, you might get 50 new 50 to 70 new people coming from word of mouth or something like that. Right. But, if you want to attract even further, you cannot just rely on word of mouth alone because, again, you cannot control it. You cannot do more of that. The, the other problem with word of mouth is that you cannot reach, like, areas that are outside, like, different, you know, neighboring towns where the parents where you're at don't necessarily go over there or you're not or if you don't have that many parents from this side of town, then the word of mouth on this side of town might not be great. And so that's the problem with word of mouth. And that might be a reason. So if like ask yourself, am I relying just on word of mouth? And if the answer is yes, then that might be a reason for why you've hit a plateau in your enrollment. Another one is because your online presence is not good. Again, you, I, I'm not telling you that your online presence is not good. You got to ask yourself, is my online presence good? Like when, when people type in dance classes for kids near me, is my studio showing up at the top? Is my studio in the, in the first, do I have a lot of Google reviews? Is my Google, my business updated? Is my website any good? Is, uh, when people go to my website, is it easy to navigate? Am I asking people when they go, when they go to my website, you know, I'll pull up here from one of our clients. If when they go to our website, when they click on, uh, you know, are my collecting information of parents um, who visit my website? Am I doing all of these things? Am I do I have advertising out there set up? Um, if so, the problem might be that people don't, you know, which is the next problem that I have listed here. People might not even know you exist if if they cannot find you online. You know, very rarely, unless you're in a place that gets a lot of foot traffic, that gets that is very exposed, um, that gets a lot of people walking by, it's very rare that you can. You know, I've spoken to so many studio owners where their studio is in the middle, of a where in the warehouse district, in the middle of nowhere, like there or like on the second floor. They don't have that much visibility to traffic that of people walking by and things like that. So they might not. They don't have the luxury of relying on foot traffic. Um, and so in which case, your online presence needs to be really strong. Otherwise, people don't even know that you exist, which is chances are for a lot of you, that's what's going on, where your studio, as good as you might be, this is, from, this is a saying that uh, one of my business mentors told me. He said, the best known product always beats best product, meaning... You, the best product out there, if nobody knows that that exists, that is always going to get beat by the best known product. The, the one that people know, that is the best. Okay, so you want to make sure that your studio is known, that you're not just like some hidden gem. In the, in, you, you know, so you want to make sure that people know that you exist. And the way to do that is you got to get, you got to be out there on the internet. You got to make sure that your online presence is great. Um, unfortunately that's the, that's the times that we're living in today. And so you got to make sure that you have a, 
you have a strong Google presence, you have a you have your Google reviews, Yelp reviews, your website is on point, you, you're generating leads from your website, you have advertising out there. That's what it takes to start generating students today. Let's go on to another thing. People don't know that you exist. You have a retention problem. So it might be that you're generating a lot of students. You're gen you're 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 enrolling students every single month, but they might be dropping off because your focus is not on help on retaining students. You might be too focused on generating new students and not paying any attention to the to the students that you've already got. It might be a quality issue in your classes that you might have to look into. It might be the teachers are not good at retaining students. It might not be like incentivizing kids to, or motivating kids to stay uh, with them long term. Uh, this is something that you will have to look at, but if you're bringing in 10 new students each month and every, st every month you're losing 10 new students, you're going to be stuck at a plateau, right? Another reason it might be that you're stuck doing everything yourself. This is a big one with studio owners, especially ones that are not used to like hiring and having a team and things like that. Because if you're stuck doing everything yourself, there's no room for you to focus on your online presence, on your marketing, on your website, on your so like the it, or or maybe you think that you need to be doing everything yourself. Maybe you're somebody who's like, if I don't do it, then nobody does it right, which might be just a, a false belief. You know, for the studio owners that we're helping, the fact that they hire us to do their marketing and to help them with their online presence or with their advertising and so on, now they're free up. Now they can free up their time. You know, we handled their 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 marketing, the generating the students, and they can focus on their retention. Um, you know what I mean? So now we're, they're generating new students, and now they can focus on retention. But you can't do that if you're stuck, if like dealing with the parents, teaching the classes, choreographing, buying the costumes, and doing everything that it takes to run a dance studio. Um, you know, you got to get out of the mentality that you have to do everything yourself. Um, people falling through the cracks. So and no follow-up systems in place. These two go hand in hand, people falling through the cracks and and um, not having a follow-up system in place. So often I ask studio owners, like, you know, uh, what is the process for people to inquire about your dance classes? And they're like, oh, you know, they call, they email, they write me on Facebook, they write me on Instagram, they fill out the form on my website, and I'm like, okay, who follows up with them? And they say, like, oh, I do, or my team member does. And And I ask, okay, you know, is there ever a time where people don't get answered, don't get responded to? They might, they might, it might be while you're teaching a class, while your staff member is teaching a class. It might be the fact that, you know, some people inquired in the middle of the night and you didn't have a chance to get back to them. Do, do people ever fall through the cracks? And the answer is always, of course, you know, and it's normal for, for everybody to have people falling through the cracks. And so, um, this is when a system, a follow-up system uh, comes into play. You need to make sure that as soon as people fill out the form on your website, they see your advertising, they click on it, they give you their information. Now you're following up with people within one minute of them inquiring, for example. This is something that not many people know. How fast you need to follow up with people matters a lot. Like it's one of the biggest determine one of the biggest factors when it comes to having success with advertising, for example, is how fast you get back to people. Because if you follow up with them, like and it takes you three days, people are gonna forget. They're gonna move on. Do find something else to do. Go to your competitors and so on. You gotta follow up within one minute because they're still thinking about it. They still have their phone in their hands, which means they're more likely to respond. They haven't gone anywhere else. Um, still on their mind. They're most excited. So all of those reasons are is why you need to follow up immediately. That's impossible to do if you're doing it manually, if you're following up yourself. This is where having an automated system do this for you makes sense. And so if you don't have any automation in your studio, you can feel free to chat with us. Go to getmorestudents.com, book a, book a call with us, and I'm happy to show you and we're happy to show you how our system works. But yeah, so not following up quickly enough not um, not having a follow-up system. So if people, I asked this to to a studio owner last year that she, she started working with us. Before she started working with us, I had a conversation with her and I said, hey, you know, who follows up with your leads? 
And she said, my staff member. But the problem is that my staff member, she's also busy doing other things. And I said, okay, so how does she know who to follow up with? She has a list of people. And I said, can you look at that list of people and tell me how many of those people need to be followed up with? And she looked, she was shocked. She had over a hundred people that she needed to get back to that were just sitting there, kind of like a pawn, just sitting there. People needed, like somebody needed to get back to this people because they had inquired and nobody had time to follow up with them. This is where automation makes sense. And also, if that's happening to you, um, you know, that's the reason why you're stuck in a plateau with your enrollment numbers is because nobody, you don't have a follow-up system in place. Okay, so the next thing is no sales process in place. Now, what do I mean by that? What is a sales process? Because we're not selling cars here. So when people come into your studio, what is your enrollment process like? What is your sales process? What do you say to the new parents? How do you get them excited about the dance classes? How do you get them motivated to buy? How do you, you know, what questions do you ask them? Do you have a script in place to for every that your that your team members know or that you're following to be able to know exactly what to say to the new parents to get them excited to get them to enroll? How many classes are you offering as soon as they come in? How do you explain your tuition? What is that process like? Do you, do you try to enroll them at the very end when they're trying to leave? Do you do it in the middle of the class or do you do it at the beginning? Um, you know, Do you have an enrollment process in place? Because chances are that if you don't have one or if you're only relying on one staff member or you're doing the enrollment yourself, then number one, you're always going to be stuck in that position. You're never going to be able to delegate it if, if it's you doing all the enrollment. And if you have a staff member and you're just relying on how good they are and enrolling them and there's no process in place, then you got to ask yourself the question, what happens if that person leaves? If that person decides one day they no longer want to work with you and they want to open up their own studio or they want to w- do something else, then you're pretty much, you're toast. <laughs> I mean, just to, you know, you're, you're going to have to find somebody new. You're going to scramble. Your enrollment is going to take an even bigger dip. And so you need to make sure that you have a systemized enrollment process in place so that when people come in, um, you know exactly what to say to them, what the what your staff members, how they're going to greet them, what they're going to say, how they're going to help them, how they're going to present the classes, how they're going to present the tuition, how they're going to try to tell them about which classes they should take, which questions to ask, and so on. And so you got to have a script in place for, for you to be able to do that. Okay, so let's see. Um, what else? So the prices are too cheap. This one is again, a big one that not many people consider as to why they, their enrollment has plateaued. And so if you have, if your prices are too cheap, you know, if you're charging anywhere less than, you know, let me just throw a number out there. This is very arbitrary. So, you know, if you don't agree with this, I, it's fine. If you're charging less than like 50, 55, 60 dollars per class per week for the tuition, then you're not charging nearly enough because what happens is if that if you're only charging, you know, I mean, twenty dollars, forty dollars or something like that for classes or less, um, you know, and I mean per month, then you're not gonna ever be able to afford to either pay people, hire a team set up advertising. You're not going to be able to afford to, to do, I mean, it's, you're going to be stuck doing everything yourself because at that price point, you're not going to have enough margins, enough money to be able to do, to hire, to, to bring in good people, to hire good instructors, to, to do all the, like set up advertising to attract new parents. So if you're charging too cheap, you, there's going to come a point where you're just going to be capped out and you're not going to be able to attract any more students and you're going to be burnt out because you're not charging enough and you're not making money. And so anyway, whole subject onto its own and I'll make a video. If you think that I should make a video about pricing, put the put it down in the comments below if you would like to hear that. Um, let's die, Let's see. Let's keep going. Students are only taking one class per week. This is another reason why you might be stuck. Again, it goes back to the money that you're making per student. If if you if the average to it if you, if the average amount of classes that your student is taking is only one, um, you know, then you're not gonna be making enough money. You need to get 
you need to incentivize students and parents to put their kids into more classes. And you and this goes back to the enrollment process. Are you, you know, are you offering just one class a week when people try to sign up? Karate studios, and this is something I just recently found out, karate studios offer a minimum of two classes per week. That's the least they could take. And so they charge a lot more because of that. They're, they make more money because of that, because they're getting kids to take multiple classes a week as opposed to just one class a week, which is common in the dance studio world. But like, you, this is where like seeing how other people are doing it. And this is why copying other studio owners is also not a great idea unless you know that they're successful because you don't know if you're copying somebody who's about to go bankrupt, right? And so I've spoken to so many studio owners who seem like they're doing great on the outside, but when you talk to them and their business, they're not doing great. They might have a thousand students and they're barely breaking even or losing money. And so you might not necessarily want to copy somebody's pricing strategy, enrollment strategy, and like without actually knowing their finances and knowing if they're doing good or not. In any case, offering, you know, make it a point to, if you're offering one class a week, when as soon as somebody enrolls, try to see if you can get them to enroll in a second one. Offer them a slight discount. Say, you know, if you sign up for a second one, uh, we'll offer you this. Do it right at the point when they enroll. This is something called an upsell. It's sort of like how McDonald's, when you order a burger, they say, hey, would you like fries with that? You know, that's called an upsell. Offer a second class right away. Offer them a slight discount if they take it. Or just offer two classes as a, as a minimum. You know, as crazy as that might seem, we have some studio owners who are doing that because they, they realize that that's how they do it in the karate world. And they started doing that. And it's been working and nobody's ever complained about it. And so just offering two classes, why? Because that's going to help you make more money, which it means that you're going to be able to afford more people, better staff members, hire, uh, be able to pay for advertising and so on. And so anyway, so that's another reason why you might be stuck. And the last one is that you're not spending enough on marketing. And so if you're doing marketing campaigns only, you know, once a month or, or, you know, once uh, one week out of the month or, or once every three months, or you're doing it consistently, but you're only spending like $2, $5 a day, that's not enough. You're going to need to spend more on marketing to break through your plateau. And marketing is simply like investing in the stock market. You know, if you, let's just, let me explain it to you this way. If you spend $100 in the stock market and, you know, in a week from now, that $100 turns into $200, how often would you do that? You would probably keep doing that consistently, right? Like if you put in a hundred and you make back a hundred, you try again next month, a hundred and you make back a hundred. Then the, the following week, a hundred and you make back a hundred. You're going to want to keep doing that, right? And you're not going to want to stop. The same thing with advertising. If you put in a hundred dollars into Facebook ads, you generate, you know, 10 new inquiries. And out of those 10 new inquiries, two two people enroll and they sign up for two classes at the minimum and they're paying you now $150 or $130. That's $260. So you, you put in a hundred, you make $260 back. That's how you're able to make money from your advertising. You keep doing that. And you, so the ads help you generate more inquiries, generate more students, keep investing more. That's how you break through the enrollment plateau. Okay. And so that's it. That is, you know, those are reasons for why you might be stuck in your enrollment. Um, here's a game plan as a bonus for watching all the very end and until the very end. Thank you guys, by the way, I appreciate your time. I, if you're enjoying this content and before I give you, before I dive in here into the bonus, if you're enjoying this content, subscribe to your channel. Let's dive right into the bonus. Here's the game plan for breaking through your plateau. So for a dance studio, it's easy to diagnose where things could be going wrong and why you might be stuck in a plateau. So in order to grow a dance studio, this is the four steps that are needed. You need more inquiries, right? So that's why there is a plus sign here and an I that stands for more inquiries. You need uh, more people walking into your studio, okay? That's the plus sign, PWI is people walking into your studio, meaning you don't just need inquiries, you need them to walk in. And then from there, you need more people, you need to have a systemized enrollment process, 
I forget what BSP stands for. Um, but <laughs> I wrote this and I don't remember. But essentially what it is, it's more people enrolling. So you get people inquiring, walking in, enrolling. And then from there, you got to keep them. You need higher retention rates. So at your studio, do I, you could ask yourself, do I have enough inquiries? If the answer is no, you need to set up Facebook marketing campaigns. You need to add a form, forms to your website to generate leads organically. You need more Google reviews to get more people finding out about your classes. You need your Google My Business listing to be set up properly so you rank higher to the top. Your website needs to have SEO. All these things to help you get found and help you get people inquiring. Again, if you're interested in, in doing this, talk to us. We could give you a game plan how we can help you do this. People walking in. This is an enrollment. Pro you need to have a follow-up process. I'm sorry. You need to have a follow-up process to help you follow up with the leads as soon as they inquire, getting them through the doors, remind sending them reminders before their trial classes, getting them to show up, reminder follow up if they stop responding to you preventing them from ghosting okay so a, a system i follow up a systemized follow up process is what you need here in this step if you don't have one there you go that's another reason why you might be experiencing a plateau um i'm just going to eliminate here this right here because i don't even know what it stands for i'll add here a post-it note and say um enrollment process, right? Systemized enrollment process. And that is going to help you. If you have a systemized enrollment process, you're going to know what to say, what to do. Your staff members are going to know what to say, what to do to get new parents to enroll as soon as they come in, instead of leaving it up to chance or leaving it up to the student, to the staff members to say whatever they think. You have a, a, you know, you write down what are all the questions I need to ask a parent? Uh, you know, what is your kid like? What do they enjoy? How old are they? Do they have any dance experience? Uh, do they enjoy hip hop? Or they, do they enjoy more structured classes or more? Are they more energetic? All these questions you need to ask and have them written down so your staff members know to ask them, um, right? So you have to have a systemized enrollment process to maximize your chances of enrolling a parent when they come in. And the last thing is having a higher retention rate. And so this, you can focus on yourself. We don't focus on retention, um, but ask yourself, am I losing a ton of kids every single month? If the answer is yes, you might need to look into why that might be. It might be that people are not enjoying the classes. Teachers are not um motivating kids to stay with them for long terms. It might be something that you're, like whatever it might be, my, this is, it might be the quality of the classes. It might be the teachers themselves, whatever is going on. You need to find out the way to do that is by giving this. If you're not great at marketing, hire somebody to help you with this few, this steps to help you with the marketing, helping you with a follow-up, helping you implement a systemized sales process and then focus on retention and the quality of your classes. Okay. So that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, subscribe to, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you found this helpful, refer this video to a friend of yours or a studio owner friend. If you want to see more content like this, again, subscribe. If you're interested in working with us, go to getmorestudents.com and book a call with us. And we'll explain to you everything that we could do and how we could help you. I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.